welcome back to this short series on the Luthier's hand tools. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm certainly having a lot of fun taking out my tools, like my saws today, and having a look over them. Over here on my right, I have a traditional bow saw. This is not a saw that you're going to see in every person's shop, um, and I don't use it except at the very beginning, when I'm taking pieces of wood and cutting them down from a bigger log down to a smaller usable piece of wood. And over here on my left, I have a flush cut saw. This one's very flexible and has a very thin curve. It's sharpened in a special way so that I can make a cut along a piece of wood without marking the surface below. Those are the two saws that I don't use so much. Let's have a look at the rest of them though. So these are the saws that I use with just about every guitar. These four, I would say, are the basic essentials. But it's nice to have a wide range of saws, because depending on whether the saw has a spine along its blade, the number of teeth per inch, or TPI, and whether it cuts on the pull or push stroke allows the saw to be used in various different ways. For example, this rip saw made by the company called Z has eight teeth per inch, and it doesn't have a spine along the back of the blade, which means I can make a very long cut for example, to remove a brace from a stock of wood. On the other hand, this other excellent saw, also made by the same company, does have a spine. It's more like 26 teeth per inch. This saw excels at cutting cleanly through soft grains, like spruce, for example, when making the braces for the top. The Veritas 22-inch push saw here differs from the previous two because it cuts when pushing forward. That just has a different feel and allows me, in my opinion, to use a bit more of my upper body strength, which is sometimes necessary when working through uh, mahogany or Spanish cedar for the neck. The coping saw here is one that is essential because you have to cut out some curves for the shape of the headstock and on the neck. This Veritas 22 TPI crosscut saw is great for detailed work. It's not an essential saw, but I reach for it on occasion, and I'm always pleased when I do. This saw here has only one specific purpose, which is pretty much the same case for these small detailed saws. This one has a curve or width of cut that corresponds exactly to the width of the slot needed in the fingerboard for the frets. And so this is the only time that I would really use that saw. Let's now have a look at some tips of the trade. When making a cross cut, there are a couple helpful things to do. The first is to mark a line on the piece of wood that corresponds with the cut that you want to make. I've done so here using a gray colored pencil so that it can be visible, but when alone in the shop, I would generally just use a fine mechanical pencil. The second thing that I would recommend is using the blades you can see there, in the reflection of the blade, you can see the wood. Now if I want to cut square and straight, I want to make sure that it's square and straight parallel line. Now if I cut, that's how it will be. But sometimes I want to have a 45 degree angle cut. So I want to rotate around until it looks like it's at 90 degrees, and then I'll have a perfect 45 degree angle cut. Next thing is that even though I have here a saw that cuts on the push stroke, I want to begin the cut on the pull stroke. This allows me to very carefully make sure that at the very beginning of the cut, it's going to be straight and square. Once I'm into the cut and ready, I can start moving back and forth. One of the secrets to using a saw though, is to let the saw do the work. Just try and relax and be patient. The next tip is to use wax like carnauba wax to lubricate the blade on both sides. This will allow the cut to go more smoothly and will ensure that the blade doesn't get stuck on any of the potential sap inside of the wood. Being able to make clean, straight, and square cuts is a key skill. 
And indeed, it took me some time to gain that skill. So I would encourage you to practice on some scrap wood before you really put your teeth to some beautiful hardwoods. And I would definitely encourage you to follow the old adage, measure twice, cut once. Thanks for watching.